down. Up! Down. Up! Down. Oh, oh. This is like being on a treadmill. Oh. They must have had some muscles in the old days. Very when you saw those keystone cups whizzing along the American railways, we didn't have to work as hard as this. No. Oh. 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 The 445 will leave from... Well, if they run out of steam as quick as I am, they'll have to be leaving at all. But they will be leaving all over Wales. The new lines, the homewoodest lines. New lines coming into action this year, starting from Hentham. St. Gothland. Beth Gallant. Abergwili. All over North and South Wales. And Valley, hold her, hold her. Oh, oh. If you can slow her down a minute. And while I pause to personally refuel, we'll show you on the map exactly where all these new hopefuls are. <laughs> and with Barry Burgess, railway enthusiast, I can say that there are two new lines planned for North Wales and two new lines in South West Wales, one in the Gwili Valley near Carmarthen and first this one in the Valley of the Tyvee. The stretch between Hentland and Pentacourt Halt, that's the part of the valley where the new line of the David Railway Company will run, is just the place for romantic dreams of restoration. The ruined local mansion is a setting for a Hitchcock thriller. You can picture the squire drinking all success to the fine new extension of the railway in 1869. And all around is the green, unhurried, unspoilt, unpiloned landscape what used to be the lost, but to me, always lamented, old county of Cardiganshire, where the little fields seem knitted into the woodlands, where nobody hurries and the country world wants to stay unaltered and untroubled. And there's still a place for the horse here. Even if the tractor does the hard, practical work on the farms, they still feel that a countryside without horses, well, it isn't a real countryside at all. At Abba Bank, Mr. Thomas Evans, the blacksmith, will still shoe your horse. The Tyvee tumbles down in white water at Hentland Falls, just as it did when the GWR extension was opened in 1869. This is a country ready to welcome the return of steam. And here is where the new line will begin, at the old site of Hentland Station. Hentland, the old church in Welsh, is about five miles from the ancient market town of Newcastle Emlyn. The old line linked Cardigan with the main line down the Tyvee Valley at Pencadder Junction. Here is the station staff, standing proudly outside the signal box in 1905. There were 11 men employed at this one small station. And I wonder how many trains went through. The old station is overgrown at the moment, but the enthusiasts of the David Railway are ready to descend on it to reopen the whole course of the line for this romantic three miles along the River Tyvee. The David Railway is going to be very practical. It's not going to extend itself too much at the beginning. The right way for a great little train of Wales to become great is to stay small. Small in an efficient way, of course. So up this three miles of track, the David will be running, not the standard gauge that was there before, but a relayed narrow gauge. What the public need is a delightful trip for the family, there and back in a morning or afternoon. And what a glorious trip it will be, with the bright river Tyvee swinging close towards the line of the railway again and again. I didn't dare ask if the new owners of the railway also had the fishing rights. Oh, they'd be worth it. As the expert Mr. Artie Jones told us, fishing along this very stretch of the river. This river is predominantly uh, salmon at the present moment, although we've had a really good run of sea trout. And um, the nets have come off since the end of August. And with the last flood that we had, the river has really filled up with fish. At the present moment, I'm fishing for salmon uh, using a fly uh, treble hooker, uh, Logie, which is one of the killers on the River Tyvee. But so far, 
luck hasn't been with me at all. But I am living in hope for some luck in the next five or ten minutes. Well, like all fishermen, at the end of ten minutes, no fish. But here's the big fish the David Railway Company are planning to catch at the end of their line, the beauty spot of Ath Calvin. The bridge goes gracefully across the Tyvee here, which begins to run down through a miniature, deeply wooded gorge, and beside it, the old mill, still flourishing, still making the much appreciated Welsh tweed. The mill has been there for over a hundred years, and the deep mill pool is a great place for salmon. Just beyond the bridge is the terminus planned for the David Railway Company. It's Pentracourt Halt. And I'm sure that its reopening in a few years from now will be as well attended as the first opening in 1912. I'll be there, even if I got to propel myself on a plate layer's trolley singing this old American railway song. Oh, the lady comes out. As I knocks at the door, you get nothing from me, because I've seen you before. All together, boys. Hallelujah, I'm a bum bum. Hallelujah, bum again. For God's sake, give us an end out to revive us again. Now at Command and Station, the arrival of another hopeful party. The beginning of the second new South Wales line, the Gwili Valley. It'll start from just outside Carmarthen town at Abergwili, the site of the old bishop's palace of the Diocese of St. David's. And it'll run into the lovely secluded Gwili Valley. I admit, I've got a personal interest in this line since I've become one of the directors. You see, you can't start programs about steam without falling for the charm of it. And let me also admit, for the charm of the countryside the Gwili will run through. For I've noticed one thing, all the great little trains of Wales run through great little pieces of the scenery. And further up, the Gwili Valley narrows from the green pastoral delights around Abergwili into a wooded defile. And at the beginning of the narrow part is Bronwyth Arms, where the society will start operations. How these old photographs bring the old railway atmosphere back. The staff always seem to have time to pose elegantly in between changing the points for the two trains of the day. And what a contrast to the scene today. Once you abandon a railway, nature comes back at a frightening speed. The weeds sprout up in between the cracks opening on the platform. Where men worked and took a deep personal interest in their work, all is broken and abandoned. And yet here, I remember, the station staff used to take pride in cultivating flower beds in their spare time. Well, perhaps the colour will return once the Gwili Railway volunteers really get down to work. We've already got our first engine, and the boys are working hard on it. Of course, the Gwili is standard gauge, so our first engine is an 040 saddle tank engine. Although, curiously enough, it was never used on British rail. It was worked by the Bristol Gas Company. It's one of the few engines of this type still in existence, built by Peckett's of Bristol in 1939. And that's very late by steam engine standards. Maximum speed is 30 miles an hour, for the wheels are close together, which could produce a wobble at high speeds. Well, that's all right by us. We've got a line that curves. We'll never exceed 30. We're wondering, however, where the name came from. It's got a fine roll to it, J. Fuller Eberly. Was he a director of the Bristol Gas Works? Well, our engine, we hope, will eventually be at work amongst surroundings far removed from Bristol Gas Works, amongst the green hills of Carmarthenshire. And we've got hopes of a terminus eventually at Conwyl Elved itself. And everyone on the Greenly knows, however, to achieve that ambition, it'll be all hands to the pump, or should I say, the plate layer's trolley. Oh, I love my boss, he's a good friend of mine, and that's why I'm starving down here on the line. Hallelujah, I'm a bum bum, hallelujah, bum again. For God's sake, give us an handout to revive us again. A handout to revive us again. Well, our next railway, the Welsh Highland, would certainly like that. But we are back in North Wales, and the Welsh Highland starts at Port Maddock, 
Curiously enough, right across the road from the main British Rail station on the North Wales coast sector. And the sign bravery proclaims Welsh Highland Railway, Port Maddock Terminus. Port Maddock was once a busy slate port, but it's now become a sort of railway lover's mecca. The British Rail is here, and across the great embankment comes the little train of the famous Festiniog line. Now will the Welsh Highland Railway join them? Will another gallant little engine puff its way alongside the Glaslyn estuary into the very heart of Snowdonia? The enthusiasts who got together in 1961 to restart the Welsh Highland were certain about it. But they had a long road to hoe or rail track to lay. When you set out to revive a line, there's enough legal complications to keep lawyers busy for years. The new Welsh Highlanders had to deal first with the official receiver, into whose hand the old company had fallen, then county councils and way leaves. And all the time they were getting their engines and their rolling stock together. And company chairman David Hearn was right in the middle of his working party of volunteers. Well, today we're just on general stock movements. We've moved the carriage, the Exile of Van Carrad carriage for the first time. It's just been pushed down the siding. We're now just moving this German steam engine. This is also the first time this engine has moved. It's going down to its new engine shed at Port Maddox. And we're also today receiving ballast, which has been put at the other end of the line there. This will be spread along the track for finishing the track in due course. We're actually working on only about three quarters of a mile of our track at the moment. This will run from Port Maddock up to Penn Mount, where we're just behind us. All being well, this should be available for some form of passenger service by 1976. What we have to do in the meantime, of course, is to bring the track and the trains up to standard, get our carriages finished and painted, everything, in fact, ready to run the railway. And what marvellous country lay ahead. Mouth-watering stuff for any small-gauge enthusiast. The Glaslyn River flows down from the heart of Snowdonia under this bridge. It needed a bit of attention, but work would be a pleasure against this background. The Glaslyn at high tide forms a still lake, for that great dike we saw back at Port Maddock now regulates the water. It's hard to believe that Back at the beginning of the 19th century, they had a shipbuilding industry up at the mouth of the pass of Aberglaslin. Now the tidal waters, once a day, mirror the foothills and lower cliffs of Moyle Hebog, the Hill of the Hawk. At Aberglaslin, the line enters the pass, and the old tunnels are still there. And down below, the glasslin, no longer tamed and placid, thunders down amongst the rocks. What a view the old travellers had as their train emerged from the Aberglaslin Tunnel 
carved in the precipice that plunges down to the river. And ahead of them, the village of Beth Gellert. And in the old days, this was an important station on the Welsh Highland Railway. This is where the new company planned to make their terminus, after the giant task of restoring the line all the way up from Port Maddock. We've seen the work already done. Was Beth Gellert to see once again the old glory of steel? In 1976 came the body blow. It was impossible to complete negotiations for the Port maddock Beth Gellert stretch. Would the Welsh Highland die again? Ah, but courage. They've got a good chance of running rights from Weinvar to Reed D, right under Snowdon itself. The Welsh Highlanders are back in business, they hope. And here's where their new line will run. Good luck to them. The harder we work, the bigger is sales. We've been making a fortune from the small lines of Wales. Hallelujah, I'm a bum bum. Hallelujah, bum again. For God's sake, give us an hand out to revive us again. And here's our final new line, operated by the Flint and Deeside Railway Preservation Society, where the enthusiasts are busy turning a dream into reality. Just over ten miles of it from Corwen to Sangotland. The terminus, the old station at Codwen, is still there. But alas, how changed from its former neat, well-kept glory. It's the usual scene so familiar to everyone who sets out to restore a railway. A jungle of vegetation is busy thrusting up through the broken glass roofs. And the old platforms, once so busy, covered with ever-increasing grass. The town of Codwen is crowded with traffic in summer. So there'll have to be a new terminus on the outskirts because it'll not be possible to rebuild the bridge across the main road. And here's where the new line will possibly end. But what a vast amount of devoted work by the volunteers of the revived Corwen Langothlan line will be needed. The lines will have to be relayed, the ballast restored, new sleepers laid down. And in places, the farmers have put fences across the track and the stations have become family homes. But here comes the reward. This, when restored, will be one of the finest stretches of the line. The great horseshoe curve of the D with the high hills in the background. How well I remember seeing it for the first time, well, nearly 60 years ago, when Father took us on our first visit to North Wales. And we looked with delight out of the carriage window at this landscape sacred to Oan Glyndwr. Marvellous for history, marvellous for scenery, but not so marvellous for the men who first engineered this line. To get down to Llangollen, they had no option but to tunnel through a spur of the Berwyn Mountains. The Berwyn Tunnel took two and a half years to build and was completed in 1865, and it's still in good condition. I walked through it in complete darkness for nearly half a mile, tapping my way with a stick. Tapping my way through the darkness. Oh, after only a few hundred yards of this, my heart goes out to people who are blind. I feel my eyes are being covered all the way in with black velvet, a dark curtain, and the only thing above me, the sinister drip, drip, drip of water. Oh, and now suddenly, from a pinpoint of light in the distance, it widens, widens, and I step out, and I'm in the light again. Among the green and down below me, the lovely, warm, human sound of the running waters of the River Dee. Just beyond the tunnel, the Dee goes bridge mad. Here you've got not only a chain bridge for pedestrians, there's the road bridge and the railway bridge over it. There are one or two other bridge mad places in Wales. I reckon that the chain bridge area has one rival in South Wales, in the railway bridges of Pontry de Ven, Richard Burton's birthplace, in the mining valley of the Avon. Down from the chain bridge, the overgrown track yielded one little unexpected treasure for the restorers. There, among the climbing vegetation, was an intact signal. 
A little further on is one of the restoration challenges, the bridge across the Dee, the only big river bridge they'll have. When it was built in 1865, there were quite a few problems about the foundations, but the Flint and Dee side will restore it all right, and they'll get into Llangollen, their starting point. And in September 1975, the historic old town waited for the most spectacular event in its history since the rebellion of Owain Glyndwr. The headlines in the Wrexham leader proudly proclaimed, back on the rails. And around the corner, the volunteers were starting to restore the station, the old station that used to be so lively in International Eisteddfod Week. You know, I once saw a group of Turks in full oriental costume dance down this platform while a Swedish choir rocked the waiting room with harmony. But even the Turkish dancers were not quite such a surprising sight in Llangollen and this. The arrival by lorry of the first locomotive. It was a superb piece of precise driving to maneuver it into the station yard. It's a D6 OST inside cylinder locomotive built in 1932 by Kitson and bought for the Restoration Society by Burtonwood Breweries. But it had passed its working life, believe it or not, in the motor car world, in the Longbridge factory of British Leyland. But its arrival was a sign that steam was back. So all was set for the grand opening ceremony of Llangollen Station, performed by Mr. Barry Jones, the Minister of State for Wales, and all the local dignitaries. And to do things in style, as at the first opening, we arrived by horse-drawn wagonette. <laughs> and so another of the great little railways of Wales begins in style. Cindy, the mayor, Mrs. Bamber driving, and behind me, a wagonette full of notabilities. Mr. Barry Jones, the minister, the chairman of the county council, the chairman of the railway line, we were all here, and we're driving now just as they must have driven to the first opening of the Flint and Dee side railway over a hundred years ago. The formal opening, the beginning of the adventure. A certain amount of anxiety, one of the wheels is slightly deflating, but then that's surely in keeping with the present state of the economy. This is in style. Now the moment comes, we dismount, and the formal key is presented to the minister who opens the new station. Why do the volunteers do all this hard work? It's the fact that I think we're, we're trying to put uh, back something that's gone missing, um, as opposed to all this modern stuff that you can go flying around the country on. This is, as we say, uh, in the most beautiful spot in the country, I would uh, venture to say. Uh, enables people to get up here by methods that used to be uh, used. And, yes, but it still doesn't explain why you are prepared, all of you, to come down here and do what, after all, is labouring work, tough work. Labour of love, I think. Well, what do your family say to it? Well, the, <laughs> wife, the wife doesn't care much for it, but I'm bringing her around to my way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that, if I may well, ask? It's very hard. We feel there's something missing in today's modern uh, society, and we're trying to bring a little bit of it back in this area. And we feel that if successful, it's going to bring a great deal of pleasure to a lot of people. Indeed it will. And amid the scenes of celebration, and as a little model railway ran along the platform, we all felt that its big brother, the Llangollen Railway, would soon be back, supporting the grand old cause of steam in the Valley of the Dee. So there we are, another addition to the great roll call of the grand little trains of Wales. And in a few years' time, There'll be a welcome in many more valleys for the cheerful, romantic, life-giving sound of steam. In the meantime, Barry, and on our own steam, it's back to base, onto the treadmill. Are you ready? Up! Uh, down. Up! Down. Up! <laughs> down. Up! Down. Up! Down. Up! Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. 
down, up, 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 down. That was the last in the series of the Great Little Trains of Wales. Next week at 20 past six, we join Timothy West for Engine Whistleblowing.